can't, you, you were just going through those names before, mm -hmm. like you were surprised. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just look at all them names. There. Can you read it? Yeah, boy, you want me to start? Yeah. Rock Hill, Union, Whitmire, Allison, Brooklyn, Langley, Greenville, Bath, Spottenburg, Graniteville, Seneca, Columbia, Clifton, Winsburg, Gadney, Pelzer, Clifton, Drayden, Valley Falls, Spottenburg, Spottenburg, Converse, Clifton, Abbeville, Blacksburg, Gadney, Bamberg, Cherokee Falls, Piedmont, Bennettsville, Camden, Wahali, Coppins, Inman, Spottenburg, Hunter Pack, Union, Packland Mill, Paris, Clover, Calhoun Falls, Slater, Newberry, Newberry, Whitmire, Buffalo, Ivor, Tucker Falls, and newly, what N E W O I knew real. <laughs> Can are you, those, all those unions were organized at the same time mm. that they organized the one here? All of them was all the same time. Uh, them down there. That was Ooh. in 1933. Good. I just don't know what to say about that. <laughs> hey, Lord. What do you mean you don't know what to say? I just... It's a, it's a lot God, of... People had to live on so little back in them days. You didn't... I don't know. Couldn't get nothing. People don't wait now then you get $10 hour. <laughs> Oh, quit job making seven and eight. <laughs> I can't wait for that, they'll so say. You wait for it when I come up, you get nothing. <laughs> so when Clifton organized it, that first at local, the, they that, were part of this whole movement. Part of that whole thing. Good. That was pretty large, wasn't it? So uh, a whole lot of South Carolinas in it. What does that make you think? I don't know, man. It was all right. Good. I mean, back in them days, that was good. But man, just didn't have nothing to go on. Yeah. Well, it was really something for them to all, it's to all them to organize. All like not this. that, like yeah, that's right. That's what you're not saying. Just. So I, so, I just wanted you to let I you know. know. You so, want so to see Clifton it. was just really, was part of mm -hmm. all of this. That union. And then that union state, there was a union presence here yeah, in Clifton? Mr. No, not the head, the head of it to me and the bigger men. They come, come in from somewhere else, they would. Because they'd tell the, tell the peoples when they were coming. And they'd go out and run and tell the people we're going to have a meeting. they be in a sitting sit today and sit sit time. they are going to have a, a meeting. We want everybody to come out and hear what they had to say. I think the, the head of the mill down the superintendent, they met several times. With we had one real good super, uh, a superintendent. Uh, L.L. L. Bryant, he, he waked down to Mr. Evans. That's the best superintendent we ever had. Sure was. We used to go out in the mill and get twine and get four or five little bobbins in the, the, and stick them on the wall on, on nail and make and take a rubber ball and put it inside that. And run it off. And he, he'd see us get them twine. The can't make ball. He wouldn't say nothing. But these other men, you couldn't do that. No, they make you put it back. Sure would. We'd get something to make us a wagon, get them wheels. He didn't care about that. Super Brian did. But Mr. Gone, but <laughs> he make you put somebody down. No, let me one more, one more thing. You know, did you did you ever tell your children about about you know the fact that there was a union and that. Some of the blacks had joined the union back in 1934. Did you ever talk about this? No, my after 
I never did talk too, too much to him about it. Things got to getting better and better, and I just didn't, I didn't explain none of it to Matilda, you know. And when they come along and work, they got good jobs. I didn't get <laughs> that and yeah, now she got a good job. I'm asking you that because a lot of people mm -hmm. um, have been have never told their children about the fact that they that they did all of this. Oh, but they, they never told I them told them about how to work. You know, we'll talk that and you know about what you had to do and how much more better shape they were than we were and all of this. Go to wait it. Center, I guess. I believe that's a different build, building. You think that's a different building? Mm -hmm. It's the official name was RCA building. Mr. Kirby, isn't the RCA building in Rockefeller Center? That's just the place where it's at. Uh, I don't know for sure. Hmm. hmm. Uh, well, did you go to the top of the RCA building? We went practically to the top. Did you? We went to the last, uh, I believe we went to the last story that the uh, elevator went to. Had to go on three elevators. One went up so many stories, then another one, then another one. And to get all the way up in the top where nobody lived or worked, <laughs> you'd have to go up some steps to get up to the very top. Did you, did you look out the window? Yes, I, I, I looked, but uh, let me tell you, I held my hand against the window and I stood way back. <laughs> you held your hand against the window? Why? Uh, that looked kind of scary <laughs> looking down. I'd be afraid <laughs> <laughs> What did, do you remember what you saw from the window? Yeah, I saw cars. They looked like ants or something crawling around on the ground. And did you go out to eat anything when you were in New York City? No, not in the city, no. You didn't eat anything in New York City? Not a thing. I see. They're still behind us? Yes, they're behind us. <laughs> When was the last time you were back here? About a week ago, something like that. No, I mean, when was the last time you went back to where the Union Hall was? Oh, I haven't been back there since before World War II. It's a road that doesn't have but very few people in it. It's kind of a back road. I'll have to guess it. I'll say it has a half a dozen houses, something like that. How far was it, would you say, from the mill village? About a quarter of a mile. How would you all get there? Well, back then, Bird. Well, about half of the people, I guess, had cars. But they walked over there, though, because didn't have a big parking space. There's a city right here, that's a post office you see yonder. And uh, it's got one store, but it's not exactly a store, I guess it's a beer hall. And about a half dozen families are living around in it. That's a big city. <laughs> that's a chemical plant here on the left. There's a store or the 
beer hole, whatever it's called. Prior to uh, getting this property, where would you meet? How's that mean? Before you got this property, where would you meet? Oh, they're in the company building theater. They used to have picture shows there. Beautiful and green out here. This has got a lot of trees, all right. Now, going that way would be in years, but going this way is safer. Were you part of the group that decided to uh, buy the hall? You mean when they have meetings there? Yeah. Yeah, I, I was until I moved away. I guess I drive slow for that driver in the back because I've got more. I'm not in any hurry because I've got more time than I have money. So I drive slow. How you doing? I'm doing okay. I'm getting there. Slow, but for sure. Can you, could you tell me why you all decided to, um, to build this hall? Well, well, first, right, my brother-in-law lived right down there. Well, to tell you the truth, it's a little bit hard for me to remember the exact reason. It seems like the company said that we're going to have to quit meeting there, but I'm not sure about that. So? This used to be the main road going to Union. Jonesville, but uh, the road we just pulled off of now goes down that way. Yeah, it's been a long time, a little bit hard for me to remember some of the things. think you all decided that you just wanted to have your own place that you owned? It might have been that, but uh, I'm not sure. How long was the, were you organized in meeting before you decided to build this hall? It must have been about three years. I'm guessing it. Because I actually don't know for sure.
I guess you notice I got the manual. I was driving a big truck and I had to change gear and I didn't want to get them confused. So when I bought this, I re required a manual. Why'd you start driving a big truck? Well, that is one thing that I had in mind to do after I got here and my first choices did not work out. I was going to wholesale seafood and haul it from Virginia at the big seaport there and haul it direct to the store instead of keeping it in warehouses. I went around to a number of stores, I don't remember how many, but I think it's about 20, and asked them would they buy from me if I hauled it direct. And they said, man, some of them said, man, what are you talking about? I said, if you can, if you can get the goods to us on Thursdays, I said, I'll always buy from you. <clears throat> At that time, is having to ship it on freight trains. And they, they said sometimes it would come on Thursday, sometimes Friday, sometimes even Monday, anywhere between. Done past the, the sales day for it. Now, you, you were doing this work, would you say it was? I was going to do that. Uh, this is after the strike? No, this was after I got out of service. Okay. And well, but I couldn't get a truck. I couldn't get a refrigerated truck. Now, after the strike. Oh, after the strike. Well, that was a different story. I thought you meant when, when I started hauling oil. Well, are we almost here? I said. Oh, are we almost there? Yeah, we're getting close. This is what they call central pack is here. That was packed we came in first. They don't have so many houses in Central Pike. They might have about 200. They've got to get some back over on the end of the hill, both directions. There's a rest home there for senior citizens. And where, where was the mill? In relationship to, you know, here, the union, the, the hall. You mean, where's the mill? Yeah. It was on the head of us. We won't go close enough to see the mill unless we make a trip there. We could do that after we stop at the hall. Maybe. Now we're entering the village, Pike Mills Village. I believe a sister lives down just a little bit further over on the next street. Now we can probably see the house. Now you be able to see it now. That's it right under. I see it. With that big fuel tank. This is the village that you did your organizing in. That's right. Could you say that? Hmm? Could you say that? I think so. Okay. Could you could you repeat that? Oh, you want me to say it? Yeah. Yeah, this is the one we were organized in.
Now we lived on down further on this street here, about a block from here. And we're going out of the village now. I haven't been down this way in so long, I just don't even remember what it looked like. Now this used to be a railroad right here. When you came down here, how'd you come? Uh, the group, as the union. Oh, now let's see. I guess this is the road here I grew up. I don't, don't look right, but I guess this is it. Oh, they changed that road used to cross up here. I got me kind of thrown off. Used to cross right, right up here. Now this was a, a grocery store here, and that's where the room used to come in. Now we're getting close to where the building was. I thought I would recognize it, but it was right up there though, I'm, I'm almost sure. Yes, it was right up there. But I don't see any signs of a building now. It burned down. I thought it might be a chimney or something, but the, not. Can we take a walk up there? Let me get off of the road here. But I don't think we're going to find any parts of the building, though. When was the last time you've been up here? I'll have to guess at it. I'll say about 50 years. Well, it was before I went into service. See there's some wires, some power, power line comes right yonder. Well, the building was right on this side of those wires.
So your local union. Uh, yeah, that was it. 1994. I believe that's right. Now I, I, I couldn't say for sure, but but that's either right or close. Now it was. You could even say it. You could say we were local 1994. Oh well, okay. I'm, that's close enough. <laughs> could you repeat that? Oh, union of 1994. Local union. Right. Local union. 1994. Mm-hmm. So, what, you, before you moved up here, you were meeting down in the mill village. That's right. Could you tell me that story? Well, they had a, a hole there they used for a lot of things. One of them was movies. They had movies there. That was silent movies. That's before the voice movies were invented, I guess. But anyway, there's some people coming there that couldn't read, and they would flash on the screen instead of a voice, they'd put the words up on there. And the people that couldn't read would ask someone close to them to, to read it for them. But, but when you first started organizing, that's where you met? Uh -huh. Could you tell me that part of the story? Well, there isn't, there isn't much to tell except we just, we just met there in the same hall. Mr. Allen, he let you have it for free, right? Yeah. Could you tell me that, you know, that we had a local union and we met there? Mm-hmm. Yes, we had a local union and we met there once a week. And Mr. Allen, he didn't own it. He. He uh, had charge of that hall, and he's the one in charge of the movies. But he didn't own it. The company owned it. And it was over what was then the company store. They sold groceries and dry goods and hardware. They had a large store. And then in, in a far end, in a the basement, they had a bathroom for men. People go in there and get showers because they did not have showers in the homes at that time. And <clears throat> I used to go in there and get my showers, and it was awful expensive. It cost a whole nickel. <laughs> so, if this is right, repeat it. Repeat this. Your local union met above the company store? Right. Could you say that? Because I don't believe it. Well, it, we did. It's the same building just above the company store. That building was three stories high. And you had <coughs> your meeting. And could you tell me that you had your meetings there once a week? Yeah. Could you say that? Yes, but we, we met on Saturdays every Saturday and uh, the company store was in the middle story and then the bottom was used for a number of things one was a beauty parlor and oh half a dozen other things I don't remember all of them and they had a drug store on in the center story now, your local union was comprised of how many, how you, which, you had a, how many mills did you have to organize to bring together your local union? Two. Could you tell me about that? Yes, the lower mill was back, back in this direction, and the upper mill was back in this direction. It was about a little over a quarter mile apart, maybe almost a half a mile. And everybody lived in the village all mixed up. Some people lived in this part over here and worked in the upper one. Some lived on the other side and worked down this way. All mixed up. But generally speaking, the people, most of the people who worked in the lower mill lived down near the lower mill. 
and vice versa. So, so you had to bring together two different people from two different mills to come together in one union. Now, I don't know anything about that, really. So if you could explain it to me, maybe even while we walk a little bit. Can we, can we walk, maybe? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, <clears throat> that's very simple because everybody knew everybody and it didn't have any any friction between us in that on that score. But uh, the company finally got to where they didn't want, at least this, this is what I think, finally got to where they didn't want to, for us to meet there. So we built a hall right up there. So it's, it stood until the union was gone and a few years more and then it burned down. I don't know what happened. Yeah, so could you tell me how you went about buying this land and then? Well, the person who owned it lives r right up there. And, uh, and he, he sold us the lot. It wasn't, it wasn't a big deal. That was back when land was cheap. I don't remember what it was. He charged us something like about $300. See, this is a hill. It's, it's not any good for cultivating. It's, and the timber on it was, the best of it was moved away. How'd you get the money up? Well, we paid, paid dues once a month. I don't remember how much. But uh, we built it ourselves. We, we didn't hire any work done. We did everything. There was a Mr. Hughes. He was familiar with buildings. And we let him be in charge of construction. So we got it done all right. Tell me how you did it. Can you walk while you're mm -hmm. coming? How long did it take to build? I don't know now. I don't have slide aside. You told me it took about a year or so. Does that sound right? I don't think it took that long. I don't think so. Let's see. You must have started uh, organizing after Roosevelt went in, right? That's right. He's he's one that encouraged the people to do that. He was an unusual president, and he did a lot of things that no other president ever did. He 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 is the cause of the the recession, of depression ending so could you say that again about president roosevelt yeah he he was the cause of the depression ending and that's why so many people supported him it was really a great a great president and what was his relationship to all of you organizing a union well the it's just common relationships, it wasn't any specific uh, differences. It's all well thought out, I think. So the, the, the reason I brought up President Roosevelt was I was just trying to figure out if he got in office in 32 and you organized your union in around 33, uh -huh. then Maybe we could figure out how long it took to build this and Well no, I couldn't I couldn't say. But uh, that wire there came came close and it was it came to the hall, the building, and so we didn't didn't have any trouble getting power. And how did it work? How did people build it each each one had his own tools, and a lot of people had hammers and saws, and that's squares, and that was the main tools that was used. 
I don't think there was any power saws back then, at least I didn't know of any. Everybody used a saw by hand. And how many people were involved in building the hall? Uh, I don't know. The different numbers every time you come because they didn't, they didn't keep any records of people working here. So could you describe to me how in between working in the mill, the union would come here? Well, we were off Saturday afternoon. The mills closed down. And uh, some of the people were off at other times and they'd work at other times. But um, the biggest crowd always Saturday afternoon. Yep, this is the side, all right. I believe that sun's going to get pretty hot now, before long. Now, what did you do to build the hall? Well, I did whatever was needed. I sawed and I hammered and, and I marked, marked the lumber off to, to fit in. And whatever's needed, I did. So, what did it feel like to be building your own union hall? <laughs> well, it felt good. Thinking we we're going to have a place now. We thought it'd be there forever. But it didn't turn out that way. So we, we scattered. I first went to, down to Union. That's a little town about, I guess about 15 miles from here. It was, had three mills down there. And I got a job in one of them. And then after I learned how, how difficult those jobs were, I got one at Chesney. And it turned out good. Uh, I, I like that job. Now, were you vice president when you built, mm. when you were building the hall? Were you already vice president? Could you say that? Yes, I was vice president when it was built. I was elected when the meeting in the company hall. But I, I didn't uh, attend after I started working somewhere else. Well, yeah, that's because you, well, you're you already leaping far away into, uh, into after the strike. Yeah. Now, when you finished the building the building, tell us about how it felt when it was completed. Oh, I, I like that. Well, tell me, say when it was completed and then tell me what it felt like. Well, uh, I came to every, every meeting and I enjoyed it because I knew that everybody around me had the same attitude that I had. And we all enjoyed the fellowship of each other. It was great. Now, do you remember, maybe we could walk into the shade a little bit. Do, do you remember the day that you finished the last, you know, when you, when you struck the, the, the last nail mm -hmm. in here? Well, I wasn't here when it struck the last when that, that was done during the week. Somebody was out a day, and they finished it up. I wasn't here. Did you have a ceremony when it was over, when you had your first meeting? Or can you tell me about the first meeting you had in the completed uh, hall? I, I don't remember now. Do you remember the first time you walked up here and the building was done? I remember walking up here, but I don't know. I'm not sure it was the first time that I'm thinking about. Yeah, I walked, I came up this road here walking, the way most of the people did, and came on up and came out this driveway. See, there's no place around here to park cars, so everybody walked. 
and when the building was done, you told me that you built things for the inside furniture? Yeah, seats and things. Tell me about that. Well, we got some uh, light lumber. I think it was, it was white ash timber and everybody likes white ash because it's it's beautiful and it's light. It's almost as light as poplar, but poplar is not a strong timber. It's easy to break. So it's not used in construction very much. So you bought this wood. You all decided that, you, I mean, you needed to furnish the building, right? That's right. Okay, so tell me, we needed to furnish the building, and then what did you all do? About all we did was meet on Saturday nights, and and outside of that, we, we didn't even come over. Now, you told me that you made your own seats, and you That's bought right. a desk. Could you, could you tell me that again? Well, we made the, <coughs> the seats out of... <coughs> out of lumber that had been dressed and, and uh, sandpapered, slick, and, and it, it turned out all right. We didn't have any complaints. It was hard seats, but, but uh, nobody complained. So how many folks would you be able to get in that hall? Mm, I don't know now. I guess about 175, just guessing at it. You know, now did you, how did the company feel once you started meeting over here in your own place? I never, they never did say anything to me about it, I don't know. And if they said something to somebody else, they didn't tell me. I guess it's been so long now, I wouldn't remember too much details, no way. Why don't we walk around this Let's way? See. Yeah? Let's see. I tell you, I'm getting hot. Okay. How about a few more down the front? Yeah. Okay, we'll follow Thanks. you. How you like this tree here? Look how tall it gets before it had any limbs. <coughs> I thought that was a car up there when I first saw it. It's going to be covered with these vines before long. So can you remember what it felt like for everyone to, for your local to come up here to their own place? Yes, I, I remember some things about him. I, I, I enjoyed it. I liked that. It felt like it's going to change our whole formula, raise the wages some, and some of us would get promotions. But uh, when they're promoted to a certain level, that they couldn't be a member of the union. Now, you are a loom fixer. That's right. Can you talk about being a loom fixer and how 
how you did your organizing in that room? Well, we didn't do it in, inside the mill. We weren't allowed to. We did our talking outside. There's a mosquito. He gone. <laughs> wow. So how, how tall was this building? It was fairly tall because it was pretty wide, you see. So it made it pretty tall. I, I don't know how tall. I'd say about 35 feet, just guessing at it. Did you sing in the meetings? No, we just met, brought up business, and discussed, discussed everything that, that was brought up. Now, you told me that um, when you became vice president, tell me about what it was like when they uh, swore you in as vice president. Well, it kind of frightened me at first because I never had done anything like that before. Then to get up and speak in the public, well, that was difficult. But I finally got used to it and didn't bother me anymore. Soon, how did you how did you feel about your uh, your position as a, a vice president of your local? Well, I was happy that people had confidence in me, but uh, I never did feel like I was the best one for the job. Why is that? Well, I had such little ed education. There's some people in there have had a college education. Most of them had been through high school, but I, I didn't even finish high school. I only been to public school something like 40 months. Why did you have to leave school? To go to work. See, we were living in the country, and for three years in straight succession, we had a drought. Didn't, didn't, in two of those years, we didn't get enough out of it to pay the expense for seed and fertilizer. But one year, we broke even and had just a little bit of profit. But uh, the three years, three poor years, put us in debt. We borrowed all the money the bank would let us have, and we bought all the groceries on credit the stores let us have, and that was the end of it. We had to do something, so we moved to the mill. And I went to work just as soon as my birthday rolled around in October because we were so far in debt and, and there were so many children. There were nine children. Well, there wasn't nine at that time, but uh, there were seven at that time when we moved here. And it took just about all my father and and myself made to buy groceries, not to say anything else, because that was the eatingest family you ever heard of. Sure did love to eat. And we finally, after about one or two more of the brothers and sisters got to working in the mill, we finally got out of debt. But it took some lots of doing, so that was really a big task. And we did our trading at this store, we, that building I showed you, as we were coming in, I said, Bonner Brothers. I worked with them a month or two when I got out of service. They sent for me because they needed need help. And I, went, I told them I'd work a little while with them until I got something better. I think I worked about two months with them. When you look over there, what do you think about? I think about seeing that building. It would be, I guess would be still standing here now if it hadn't burned. What else do you think about your local union? Well, I don't think about it anymore. It's 
it's it's past history and I don't, don't see much point in it now because uh, I wouldn't have been in the union if it had been one after I got out of service because I'd drive a truck and and that occupied my time. Well, is that the, is it over there in that building where that building was that you all talked about going out on strike? Now let me see. No, I believe we started talking about it before we we moved over there. Yeah, while we were meeting in the hall, the, the theater hall. That's what we called it, but it was used for other things too. So you started talking about the strike over there. And did you take a vote for the strike over in this building? No, we done had the strike when we moved over here. So you built this after the strike? Mm-hmm. Well, we might have started during the, the strike. I'm not sure now. I'd rather not say because I, I don't know. Okay. Well, I'll help you remember that. I think that strike took place in September 1934. It might have been. I bet you moved here before then. Well, uh, I don't know for sure. Was there a headquarters during the strike? Do you remember meeting in a central place? Well, just just the two places that I told you about, the hall down there over the company store and the building here. That's the only place we ever met. So I wonder if during the strike maybe you met here. Hmm. I try to remember that, but I can't. I can't, okay. can't tell you. Okay. Now, do you remember climbing up there and pounding some nails? Can you talk oh, yeah. about that? Yes, I, I went up on top of the building. It was way up high. Nothing there but the frame. You had to climb, walk some two by fours, and uh, nail the rafters down. That was a pretty big job to me because I wasn't used to that kind of work. Did the women work on this also? No. Well, back then, the women were just women. That was all. <laughs> now, they did become members of the, of the whole of the, of the union, though. <clears throat> I think there was as many women in the union as there was men. When you would all meet in there, you were the vice president and Mr. Hughes was the president, is that right? No, he, no, he was, he was the secretary. He did all the book work, but he, he knew more about it than uh, most of the others did, so most of the people, if they had any question, they'd ask him. Now, could you talk about after the strike? What happened to you? Well, I went back to work and worked, uh, I would think it was about a year, something like that. They didn't, well, you were vice president right after the strike when everyone went back to work. You didn't get to go, did you? Well, I, I went back and worked about a year after the strike. But I mean at Packlet Manufacturing Company, yeah. right after? Yeah, I worked in the same place. Run the same job about another year. And then, and then I, I, I had to leave another place. I couldn't have picked a worse place than the job I got. How come you had to leave Packlet Mills? Because I, I didn't have a job. The reason that job uh, I got down at down on your union was because they had they had a rule there that the loom fixers 
they kept a record of all the parts they used, the expense, how expensive they were, and they kept a record of everybody that used less than $125 worth a month got a higher wages than those that used over. So, so everybody didn't uh, put on new parts where they need them every time. They tried to get by without using a lot of supplies and that caused the jobs to go down. And when I got there, it was in awful shape. What happened over here? I mean, <clears throat> the union, after the strike, the union stayed together for a while, didn't it? Yeah. Could you tell me that and then, could you tell me about that? Yes, they stayed together. Can you say after the strike? Yes. After the strike, they stayed together. It must have been a couple of years, something like that. But I wasn't around, I'm not sure. And what happened?